There's a number of different recovery strategies we can use. We said that if we have a very short RTO, really the only option is to have two mirrored sites that are up and running, ready to go all the time. And if one goes down, hopefully the other can just continue uh, operating seamlessly without any type of interruption. Now, there are two types here. You could have what we call multiple processing centers, and that is two mirrored sites that are both running all the time. Or you could have truly a mirrored site where you have one site which is running and the other is kept in sync, but it's actually not running at the time. Uh, it would cut over to it usually within a minute or two. The other is to use the services of a third party. SunGuard, Comdisco, you've got IBM, HP, many companies now that offer hot sites, a fully equipped data center. You can get up and running at that center quite often within four to six hours. We used to have a lot of mobile sites, so they're kind of uh, being phased out now. A mobile site was just quite simply a server farm in the back of a truck. It would drive up and it had racks of servers, a couple of desks, of course it had the diesel from the truck itself. You had satellite uplinks and you could have a whole server room out in front of your building within whatever time it took for that truck to drive to your location. But today, of course, the cloud is one of the most popular alternatives that's out there. I have an agreement now that if we have an interruption, we'll just cut over to the cloud. A cloud service provider will provide then our support for us. Now, another option was always the idea of a warm site. And a warm site is a site that's partially equipped. For many companies, their warm site is where they're keeping their off-site backups. You've got then some equipment out there, but you're missing some of your main CPUs, your main servers. And you would have then ship in agreements with a vendor that would allow you to get the equipment you need within a certain number of hours to be able then to build that site out to a full, fully functioning data center. But a warm site is one where it's, should we say, it's halfways there. We've got the data, we just don't have some of the final equipment we need to get it up and running in production. An alternative that's not good enough for most companies today is a cold site. A cold site is really a room that we could turn into a data center if we need it. Now, even a cold site should still have telecommunications, power, and heating, ventilation, air conditioning. Because if I don't have those three, I'm not going to be able to recover within any reasonable time frame. The telecommunications providers are not going to bring in a fiber to my building within a couple of days as I would like. So the idea of a cold site is really, we can say here, quite often what we'd call a tiered approach. If we have an outage, we would first of all then cut over to say a hot site, and then a week or two later, when we had a cold site built out with the equipment, we would then transition over to that cold site. The idea being that you don't want to be at a hot site any longer than necessary because it's extremely expensive per day while you're there. Another option is a reciprocal or sometimes called mutual aid agreement. This is where two companies agree to work together. If you have a problem with your equipment, hey, I've got some spare capacity, you can use mine, and vice versa. The idea being here that instead of either one of us having to spend a lot of money on redundancy and, of course, failover capability, now we'll be able to just have an agreement, a gentleman's agreement between co two companies will help each other out. Now, obviously, a reciprocal agreement is probably one of the least desirable options here because the day we go to use it, we find out that the person we negotiated with this doesn't even work for the company anymore, and it requires both of us to keep our equipment in sync all the time. But a lot of options today are outsourcing, outsourcing certain functions that we can get rid of, non-critical processes that, uh, well, a couple of the functions that often will be outsourced, things like payroll. There's, it's very easy to outsource payroll to companies that do payroll all the time. They can worry that all of our employees get paid and we can focus on recovering then our critical business processes.